Hello, everyone. Back with our second set of ISMS policies. We will be talking today with Matt Cooper, our in-house security and compliance expert here at Vanta. Um, and we'll do a bit of a deep dive on the ISMS um, policy, which I will pull up here and hand to you, Matt, to talk through and deep dive. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. Hey, folks. Back again. All right, so today we're talking about our second governance policy in our ISMS policy stack called the Information Security Management System Policy. So what is the purpose of this policy? I'm gonna give a little bit of context here before we talk about the specific sections. So as we talked about earlier in our conversation on the first uh, ISO policy, ISO is first and foremost a governance system. And so clauses four through 10 have a number of somewhat prescriptive requirements around governing your ISMS. And in fact, uh, item, uh, let me get my number right. Control 4.4 of the clauses says the organization shall establish, implement, maintain, and continually improve an information security management system in accordance with the requirements of this international standard. So ISMS is the ISO language, the ISO way of saying essentially your security program, including your governance mechanisms. And there are a number of requirements, which are, I would say, a little bit squishy and hard to um, hard to audit or measure. Um, for example, the next section, section five, is around leadership, leadership and commitment. And it says that, uh, you know, top management shall demonstrate leadership and commitment with respect to the information security management system by ensuring that the security policy and objectives are established and compatible with the strategic direction of the organization, ensuring the integration of the ISMS into organizational processes, so on and so forth. And there's like a number of these governance requirements that are, are fairly specific. So what policy two is intended to do is essentially go through at a high level, these uh, governance requirements and say that you're going to do them in a formal document. So it's essentially a document saying, hey, we're going to do ISO in a formal way. And then it, it calls in or references a bunch of the other ISMS policies around the specific topics that you need to account for uh, so that you can clearly show to your auditor that you're doing ISO 27001. So you heard me talk about establishing the objectives, that's one of the first things that we do here in the policy is establish information security objectives. Let me just say, um, there is an implied objective for really every organization that doesn't formally state the objective. And the implied security objective for pretty much every organization at a minimum is to protect the security, aka the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of some certain data set that they're trying to protect. Typically that includes company and customer data. And so we're making that explicit. Uh, we're also saying an objective is to maintain ISO certification and comply with our legal obligations, laws, regulations, customer contracts, et cetera. So we're, you know, we're making explicit what is essentially the implicit objective of every org you may have more specific objectives and you could feel free and add those in here as needed. Um, but otherwise this, this should generally work for you. And then we, um, we also reference an objectives plan because there's a few more prescriptive requirements that come further on down the standard. Moving down the template, um, we talk about leadership and commitment. So again, this is something that ISO says we need to demonstrate. And we primarily refer to our roles and responsibilities policy, where you can take all of the key stakeholders in your management team by role, and you can explicitly assign for, to them um, responsibilities and functions. 
Um, and these can, you know, demonstrate the things that they need to do to show their commitment to the system. And if we move down further, we talk about roles and responsibilities yet again, we, we reference the same document. Uh, we talk about our approach to assessing and treating risk. This is another one of the requirements of the ISO governance clauses. And then we refer, refer out to our risk assessment and risk treatment process document. We uh, talk about how we're gonna control documented information, another governance requirement, and we refer out to that policy. Uh, we talk about communication. So this is something that ISO is explicit about. You need to have essentially a communications plan for what you're gonna communicate, who's gonna communicate it, when you're gonna communicate it, so on and so forth. So we say we're gonna do that and we re reference the plan. We talk about internal audit. We state we're going to do that, and we reference the plan. Management review is similar, and then lastly, corrective action and continual improvement. So that's the intent of this policy, right? It's it's saying, hey, we're going to do ISO. This becomes an approved policy by your senior leadership, and it's a very tangible way to demonstrate that your organization is and, and your leadership are committed to doing ISO and adhering to the, you know, the requirements of the standard. Um, like with all of our policies, you're welcome to modify this. If you feel, you know, a certain section could be stronger or there's something that, you know, we don't have in here that you want to reflect on, by all means, please add it for yourself, you know, when you're going through that. But that is the, that is the purpose and intent of this policy it should be fairly straightforward.